This video is a review of trigonometric functions. So in general, we're going to have some point here in two-dimensional Cartesian space. So we have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, the distance from a distance along the x-axis and along the y-axis. So these together form a triangle. In this case, they form a right triangle. So we have our <clears throat> we have our length here, r, the distance of that point from the origin, and we have its one height is y, the other, uh, the length of this is going to be x, and then there will be some angle that this uh, point makes with the plus x axis, this angle being called theta here. Alright, so what are some of the restrictions about this value r, or what is this r in terms of x and y? So r through the Pythagorean theorem is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. And the maximum value of r, or the maximum magnitude of r, can be the magnitude of x or the magnitude of y. Because we always have the other coordinates squared in there, both of these are positive numbers, so r can't be any bigger uh, than the magnitude of x or y. So that's our restrictions on x and y here in terms of uh, they have to be between negative r and positive r. Alright, if we are along the positive x-axis, so x is positive, y equals 0, then our angle is 0 degrees, or 0 radians. If we're along the plus y-axis, where our uh, y is positive and x is 0, then we make an angle of 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. Along the negative x-axis, we make an angle of 180 degrees, or pi, or, sorry, pi radians. And finally, along the negative y-axis, since this is always going counterclockwise, we make an angle of 3 pi over 2 radians, or 270 degrees. Alright, so some helpful functions when you can think about these things. So we can define the sine of theta, the sine of our angle. And that's equal to the uh, opposite side of the angle, opposite side of the triangle, or its height, divided by the hypotenuse length r. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. There's also the cosine of theta, which is x divided by r. It's the length of the adjacent side of our right triangle divided by the uh, hypotenuse length. And the tangent of the angle, opposite over adjacent, or y over x. So those are the three uh, basic trigonometric functions. We can also define inverses of these functions. We can define r over y, hypotenuse over opposite to be the cosecant, 1 over sine. The secant we can define as 1 over cosine, or r over x. And the cotangent we can define as 1 over tangent, or x divided by y. And all of these have corresponding uh, uh, inverses as well, arc sine, which is what value of y over r gives us this, uh, or what theta gives us this value of y over r. So the arc sine of y over r would be theta, because the sine of y over r is theta. The arc cosine of x over r gives us theta, and the arc tangent of y over x gives us theta. Right, so the ranges of these functions, how, how big or how low can they go? Well, since we bounded y here, and that it has to be smaller than or equal to the magnitude of, or its magnitude has to be smaller than or equal to r, so that means that this is always going to be a smaller number divided by a bigger number. So negative 1 is less than or equal to the sine of theta, which is less than or equal to 1. Sine goes from negative 1 to positive 1. Similarly, cosine, r can't be, or x can't be bigger than r, so cosine goes from negative 1 to 1. But there aren't any restrictions about what x and y can be relative to each other. We could be on the plus x axis where uh, y is 0, or we could be on the plus y axis where x is 0. So these both go from negative infinity to positive infinity, because both x and y can go from negative infinity to positive infinity and they're independent of one another. 
All right, so uh, cosecant is one over sine, so that can go from one to infinity. So if we take one over these numbers, the lowest they can be is one, and they can go up to infinity. For secant, similarly, cosine bounded by those values, so it goes from one to infinity. And cotangent, again, has no restrictions on its values. All right, so then arc sine, well, we could, uh, in principle, have any value here, but we want to define it over a, over a well-defined range, because eventually if you go far enough, the values of sine and cosine start repeating again. So we want to have a unique value that we've assigned to each value of sine and cosine. So typically for, for arc sine, you define that to be over the, range, or over the domain of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 radians or negative 90 degrees to plus 90 degrees. For, so that would be from this range to here for this yellow sine function. And for co arc cosine, typically you define that from 0 to pi, from 0 to 180 degrees, 0 to pi radians, uh, for all those unique values there. And arc tangent similarly often goes from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees should be this region here in our uh, light blue tangent function. All right, some identities which help us work with some uh, odd, va some strange values that we might get. We can simplify them sometimes. If we increase our angle by 360 degrees, we just end up in the same spot. So we have the same sine and the same cosine whenever we go around by 2 pi radians. Also, whenever we go around by 180 degrees, we end up at the opposite uh, side of, of our graph here. So whenever we increase our, whenever we're increasing by 180 degrees, we're going to get whatever is the opposite of whatever sine or cosine we had before. And going up 180 degrees gives us the same tangent because both x and y have, sw have switched signs but kept the same value. So a ne uh, negative number divided by a negative number gives us the same number. So uh, tangent going forward 180 degrees always just gives us the same value. All right, um, sine is anti-symmetric with respect to um, the origin here. So sine is what you would call an odd function. It's, 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 the, it's reflected. Uh, in, sorry, inverted through this origin here. So sine of negative theta is negative sine of theta. And cosine is symmetric about the y-axis here. So cosine of negative theta, it's its mirror image on each side, so that's equal to just cosine of theta. If we add or subtract 90 degrees here, we can interconvert sine and cosine. So if we look at our value of sine, and we go forward 90 degrees, cosine always has the same value. They have the same value, but they have what's called a phase shift of 90 degrees relative to one another. So you can change sine into cosine by adding a 90 degree phase shift there. Very helpful identity whenever we have the, the quotient of sine and cosine, so sine theta divided by cosine theta. If you look, this would be y over r divided by x over r, the r's cancel and you just get y over x. So the tangent of theta is just equal to sine over cosine. All right, and then <clears throat> um, if we have the sine of a given fun of a given angle and its cosine, that uh, those squared are always going to add up to one. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Let's take a look at this here. So sine squared will be y squared over r squared. Cosine squared will be x squared over r squared. But notice that r is x is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So r squared, our denominator, is just equal to x squared plus y squared, which is our numerator once we have squared and summed both of these. So you should be able to convince yourself through substitution that sine squared plus cosine squared always has to be equal to 1. And then, of course, the interconversion between uh, degrees and radians 
is going from degrees to radians, we would multiply by 180 degrees and divide by pi and do the reverse going from radians to degrees. Or sorry, going from uh, radians to degrees, we'd multiply by 180, divide by pi, do the reverse to go to radians. Okay, then we have the functions or the graphs of these functions. Sine at zero starts at zero, goes up to one at 90 degrees, zero at 180, negative one at 270, back to zero, and then repeats every two pi thereafter. Cosine of zero starts at one, goes to zero by 90 degrees, goes to negative one at 180, zero at 270, and back up to one by 360 degrees, repeating thereafter. So tangent at zero, degree, at zero degrees starts at zero, and then quickly goes up to infinity, or undefined, by 90 degrees, then comes back up the other up, up down the other side from negative infinity up to zero again, and it's repeating every 180 degrees. Then there are some uh, nice triangles we can define in the intermediate there. Sine of 30 degrees being one half, Sine of 45 degrees, where x and y are equal, 1 over the square root of 2. And the other side of that 30, 60, 90 triangle, sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So those values are the same for cosine, but we've inverted them because they're kind of off by 90 degrees relative to one another. 1 square root of 3 over 2, 1 over square root of 2, 1 half and 0. So then the tangent is just the quotient of those two. So tangent of zero being zero, as I mentioned, tangent of 30 degrees being one over square root of three, tangent of 45 degrees where X and Y are equal is going to be one. And then lastly, the tangent of 60 degrees being square root of three as tangent goes quickly marching its way up towards infinity at 90 degrees.